Hey everyone, today we're at Replay Restoration with Benjamin Miner. We've actually stopped here before and talked to him and took a trip over to Mystic Pinball, but we're back looking at this latest project as I help him install some vinyl. So here is his information as it does or does not focus, but there we go, there it is. Benjamin Miner, Seth Benjamin at the gmail.com. And uh, we're gonna go take a look and see what we're working on. Today, uh, we're actually, first thing we're gonna do before we get started is because we're installing vinyl on the front of a pinball machine, we are going to, oh no, hey, hi Ben. Hey Tim, how are you? <laughs> I, know, I don't wanna barge in here, but so we're, when you install vinyl over a, the front of a pinball where there's a giant hole, sometimes it's a little tricky because, you know, vinyl flexes and stuff like that. So we're coming up with a solution here to make our lives easier. So we're actually just gonna put a piece of scrap wood and some backing to hold it in place temporarily so we can put our vinyl on and then take it off. So I go ahead and cut a piece of plywood that's a little smaller than the hole itself. And uh, we'll temporarily maybe screw these little cleats in just to hold the plywood in place. Um, and then when we do the decal, we'll put it over the whole surface. And once we're finished, then we can quite easily slice out the opening here and just pop this pop. whole panel right back out. It's a lot easier than having your vinyl with this big floating blank space in the middle. Yes, as we found out last time, right? <laughs> uh, so now we only have to really worry about, you know, the start button hole, if there is one, which this one's actually gonna be on the coin door. Right, so that makes it easier. And then easier. the shooter rod, so yep. that will be, that's the only holes. I mean, we don't have to, these holes don't really matter. They get covered up anyway. Yep. But, um, Ben, what game is this for? <laughs> this is a conversion for the famous Valley Kiss, which was a big runaway success of a game in 1978. And uh, Mark Hankowski of the former uh, Mystic Pinball, big pinball collector, he really likes obscure games, unusual games with uh, low production numbers. Uh, so he found somewhere uh, the Miss World conversion kit by the Geiger company. I'm not sure if it's pronounced Geiger or Geiger. Um, and it has some long German name after Geiger that I okay. didn't even attempt to pronounce. Uh, but they made these conversion kits where I think, if my understanding is correct, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I gather. Yeah, you know, in, in the little comments down here, yeah. <laughs> people will be like, Ben, yeah. you're wrong, but it's fine, from, you know? <laughs> my understanding is that the, the business model was that if you were an arcade owner, and you had a game that was a big hit, it'd be in your arcade for a couple of years, and eventually people would lose interest, the game would stop working quite as well, and you didn't want to like retire the game entirely and buy something new. You, right. The cheaper option would be to get a conversion play field and a conversion backlash. So they did conversion kits for pinball machines. We're very common with them in the arcade world video side of things, but they're doing know. them. Yeah, were they common? I don't oh, know. super common in the video okay. side of oh, things okay. yeah. where they would take, you know, like a centipede cabinet that had run its course and then convert it to Arkanoid yeah. or something oh, else, okay. right, right, right. which so. was common. But I, you know, the idea in a pinball world is, is new to me. So this is yeah. a freshly painted freshly cabinet. Painted. Is this a brand new cabinet or is this a, no, a this leftover? Is the, this is the same cabinet. You know, the, okay. If the cabinet is not a total wreck, I find it's still uh, more cost effective to salvage what's there and set right. it up and patch whatever, uh, you know, if there's nothing catastrophically missing, you can patch in with Bondo and just re right. and sand out nice. And this nice. turned out nice. It's nice and smooth. You know, the, you, yeah. my, the people who watch me know how much I love looking at paint and watch it <laughs> dry but that this came out super nice and this machine was a barn find i mean it was it literally had had rodents living in it Ooh. so there, you can really yeah. do a lot even with a thing that <laughs> seems like a total goner yeah so. no now i'm gonna go over we're gonna go over and take a look at the old play field real quick and then we'll show you the new play field and hopefully youtube doesn't get mad at me <laughs> so here is the old Kiss playfield, and as we can see, you know, it was definitely in a barn. <laughs> the plastics are actually in pretty good shape on it. They've been cleaned up quite a bit. Yeah, and it cleaned up well, but you know, the rest of it here, you know, it's tired. A lot of wear. We can feel it. 
but yeah, not a good candidate for restoration. No, but later we'll see some of the things that Ben has restored and um, it's honestly jaw dropping the work he does. So, so just, okay, so we're gonna remember this. We're gonna keep this in mind. So this is the KISS machine, okay? And now we're gonna go look at the conversion kit. So the conversion for the KISS machine is Miss World. And here is the back glass with this lovely lady here saving this like, you know, kind of a, a futuristic barbarian. Oh yeah, it's like a combo a combination of both, <laughs> right? I don't know. And she's got a pet parrot. And an elephant. It's like a... a and an elephant belt buckle. Yeah, look at that. Well, there's the elephant and down an there, the elephant belt buckle, which is, that's kind of ironic, right? You know, an elephant there? I don't know. <laughs> A little, you know, interesting taste here, but we'll see more as we look over here at this, uh, this play field. And remember, this is art, people. <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter. This is art, okay? And uh, don't, no, this is, you know, not for the children's. I mean, unless you're 18 years old in the 70s, and then in which case, yes. But here we go. Here are the ladies of this game of Miss World. And um, yeah, definitely what, late 70s? Well, the kiss was 78, and I think maybe this conversion kit was from 1980. Um, okay. And I think the concept was that you could throw this conversion play field into your old cabinet, and because it's 1980 and porn isn't everywhere yet, the 18-year-old boys will line up dutifully to pump quarters into your machine because it's got boobs all over it. Yeah, I'd say it has a lot. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's ladies here everywhere. What is this game? <laughs> not, but, not to toot my own horn, but we were missing the slingshot plastics, so these were actually made from scans that I built. Oh, made, wow, I okay. Those from scratch. So this is a scratch built. Yeah, the other plastics plastic. are original, but we were missing the slingshots. So, so there are those. those. And we'll see some more of uh, his fancy artwork. So in this, tell me about this play field. So everything underneath is KISS, right? Yes, it's all, the whole layout is identical to KISS and all of the wiring and all of the mechanisms are from the barn find and they cleaned up pretty good. I did end up replacing all the lamp sockets because it was just like, you know, it was gonna be too much of a mess. Um, but the big ones on this big plate, those were actually okay and usable. Oh, great. Um, and everything else just got cleaned up. Yeah, um, I mean, this looks factory fresh. It's Super clean here. I used copper tape rather than uh, the, the rounding strap. Rather than braid, because yeah. why not? It works really, really well. Yeah. Um, and it's you, you don't have to staple as much. Uh, I have actually found that sometimes the impact of an upholstery stapler can craze the uh, clear coat. If it's oh near, wow! Okay. If it's hole yeah, depending on the the yeah. length of the staple, so, absolutely. So and I, I lower the pressure down on the stapler as far as I can, um, but this just eliminates not having to use it as much. Yeah, no, that's, I never would have, I mean, I've got copper tape in my, you know, bag of tools, but I never thought to use that. That's Works uh, great. Yeah. All right, so now that we've seen all the pretty ladies from the 70s <laughs> on the front here, we're, you know, and he's done all, looks like, this is a new old stock play field, you said? Is that what there this are, was? There are only old stock. There's so, only old stock. Yeah. There's nothing else out there. I think they, they had a, a bad production run and then, and then canceled the project. I, I think these actually kind of never went to market. And so from what I'm told, there are only maybe nine or ten of these in the world. That are Very low play. production. So, you know, there, there might be some, some of these play fields are kicking around. There might be a couple hundred of those around, but actual working this world play fields you're looking at. Like, so this is an exclusive. We, like, we're probably like not going to see one of these yeah. again anytime soon. Probably and not. we're definitely going to have to take a trip back before it ends up in its owner's hands and play it. For sure. Yeah. So, all right. So now that we've seen this, we've seen this lady here, we're going to go ahead and start putting some vinyl on and we've got, we're going to start, end up starting over here with uh, the head of the pinball machine, and then we'll do the front of the pinball machine, and then we'll save the sides And these for decals last. were generated off of uh, IPDB posts. Oh, okay. I think that they were a one-off. I actually don't know where they're from originally. Um, there were some, something that somebody made up, and uh, the owner of this game wanted to emulate them, so we 
pulled the photographs off of IPDB and reworked them in uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, thanks to my friend Jesse Georgia, who's a terrific graphic artist. Awesome. Uh, he did the work on that. Nice and, job, Jesse. Yeah, As a person who works in Illustrator, or has a long time ago, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> So we were going to try to do it as stencils, which the originals were, but then we realized that that was going to be madness. Yeah. So we decided to have them printed as decals instead. And you guys know I've done stencils before, and I'm counting colors in here, and I don't want to count that high in stencil land, okay? <laughs> so, like, I can count to two in stencil land, but let's stop there, please. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get to work. All right, so we're going to put this lovely lady here on the side with her armor or elephant armor. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you guys have ever peeled vinyl before. Sometimes when you get vinyl, it's masked on the front. Like if you buy uh, stuff from, I think it's this old game, they do the, they mask the front, which I absolutely love that they, they do that because I worked in the commercial sign industry. But when you get something like this, what we're gonna do is just, I like to hinge it right in the middle. That's what the blue tape is. We're just gonna cut this off. There we go. And what you can use is they sell squeegees like this that have felt on the sides. And that keeps everything from getting scratched up. But if you don't have a squeegee like that, you can just take the piece of wax paper that you cut off and fold it around your squeegee like that. And that'll do a very nice job. And we're just gonna come bring this piece of vinyl up. Nice and so we're gonna get a little bit of slack to kind of get it started. Make sure we don't have any like little, little wrinkles they get started here. And uh, let's say we apply some pressure, but you know, if you apply too much pressure, things don't slide like they want to. But if you don't apply enough pressure, you get air bubbles, and we don't want air bubbles. Some vinyl is very good at releasing those air bubbles. And some air bubbles will actually go away on their own over time, depending on the vinyl that is used. And if uh, you get an air bubble that you're, is really bothering you, you can actually just kind of poke it with your X-Acto knife very gently just to release that air and you should be good to go. And there we go. We don't use any sort of wet application. As some people would say, that's for noobs. But we're good here. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll unhinge the bottom and do the same thing. Pull off our mask here. And I think Ben's behind me secretly watching because he said he got a vinyl cutter and he's going to start making stuff on his own. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> He's going to make some of his own vinyl and apply it. Well, you know, it's one thing to do a two color uh, masking job, but uh, something like this. And this is the little one. We start, we, I like to start with these little ones to kind of warm up, you know, we just got, and then once you, you know, you, you come back from that little hinge there, pull it back, you kind of give it some slack so it falls into place. And then once it starts falling into place, you just kind of go back and forth. I know what some of you guys are thinking who are watching this. Get those comments out of your mind. I approve all my comments, so I'll laugh, but I probably won't post it. You can just roll up your vinyl underneath here. I probably should move my camera. Who knows even what we're looking at now? Yeah, there we go. Good enough, right? And after we do this, we're gonna head over to the big cabinet and do that. But I don't know. We probably won't show that. I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm doing things, I end up rambling to myself. I'm like, well, that sounded horrible. Well, this is the part you edit out. Yeah, you, you edit it out or 
We'll put some background music in. Or you put it on the two X speeds and you Yep, totally do that. Yeah, he sacks it up. Yep. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, so then the next thing we'll do is, um, actually Ben's gonna do this. He's good at this. He comes in, he's gonna come trim off all the, the extra. But there we go. There she is. Miss World is on the side, on the head of the, the pinball on both sides. So now we're gonna head over here and do some vinyl there. All right, so here is the vinyl for the side. We did the vinyl for the front with our wood block here. So we can just come in, trim that out, and we're on our way. So here's the custom side art that was done. I know you guys probably see like a pink border around here because this was a nice you know, a custom job. So that's kind of just outlining the perimeter of the cabinet. And then you, you've got basically a trim line to kind of come in and you know make everything too. So everything will be set in a little bit off the edge once you do the trim line. And Ben's gonna do that because Ben does a, a nice job at it. And he's very particular. But, but here's the lovely lady of Miss World here on the side. <laughs> with a tiger. Was there a tiger anywhere else? I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think there was a tiger anywhere else. No. Is there a tiger over here? Uh, um, there's, we've there's got an no. elephant. Yeah. We've got a bird, a crane, we've got the parrot. Yeah. We've got like the, I don't know, like bat thing here. I don't, I don't know what that is. We've got the lady, Miss World. <laughs> we've got Miss World here with planets behind her. That makes sense because, you know, other worlds. And then we've got these ladies here, and um, I don't see a tiger anywhere at all. <laughs> but that's okay. There's a tiger here. And now we're in the jungle instead of space. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put this big giant piece of vinyl on. And hopefully because I'm on camera, I'll screw it up. Ben seen me do it, you can do this. So we pull it up. I do it dry. I like to do this dry. I know a lot of people use wet application. That's totally fine. So I'm using a, the backing as like a support. And then what I do is I gently come in. And let it start to fall naturally. And then once I see that I'm over my little crease of the wax paper, I start applying more pressure. And it's nice going back and forth. Larger ones, I'd probably apply a little bit more pressure than I would when I do. I want to get a smaller head on the front just because this is a larger surface area. I don't want bubbles. Again, we talked about bubbles. You can get rid of them pretty easily. And uh, if you have a surface edge like this, it's a good idea. Take your squeegee and make sure you go off the edge. If you stop short, you may trap an air bubble. And at the end, get rid of your wax paper. Start in the middle. Work your way out. Now we've got our one half done. We'll fold up the other half and do that. Kind of check real quick. Sometimes if you got an air bubble, work them out. You have any. Sometimes you little, you know, you're, you may not actually have an air bubble underneath. It may just be like a little tiny paint imperfection or a piece of dust. And don't let that drive you crazy because when you're looking at these things like this. You see a lot more than you do when they're upright. So don't let that, that bother you. All right, we're gonna flip it over and do the other side. All right, next up here, we're gonna do the other side. What I have here is like a little tiny window that I made, and that was just for the, when I held the tape down um, so that I'm not trying to fold this underneath. We don't wanna do that. Now we're just gonna take this, we'll fold it back. All right, and then we're gonna fold, start peeling the backing, and we're gonna stop halfway because that gives us the support we need to hold this up. So we fold it back halfway, kind of like that. Yeah, there it is. 
and then that we can hold it from there, and then we can remove the rest as we need to. See that, that a good spot? Sure, why not? I like doing things flat like this. I do, I do them up you know, vertically as well, but when they're flat, you, have, um, you can take a break. So lift this up again. Remember, we're going to kind of let it relax a little bit. It'll kind of fall naturally where it wants to go. And then once it starts laying the way you want it to lay, you just kind of come back and forth. And we're recording this for Ben too, so he gets the courage to do this. <laughs> He's got the vinyl cutter. He's got the vinyl. He's got tons of wood in his shop. He can lay practice vinyl all day long. When you do this, just take your time. It's not a race. I mean, it might be a race if you didn't pay. Then roll it up almost the rest of the way. side to go and we'll trim this off the excess off and then Ben will come in and do the fancy trimming but but there it is there she is Miss World <laughs> all right now we'll trim and flip all right the side art is on the cabinet the front the sides of Miss World here this conversion game it's on the head as well and we you know we've got our pretty ladies here on the converted play field and we have futuristic Miss World here and now we're gonna go take a look at some of Ben's uh, projects that he's got going on so I know we've talked about this one before the last time I was here and I'll see if I can find that video and you know link it way down. So he's got the pin bot that he's working on. I'm showing this because we're gonna look at something else here in a second. We've got a pinball machine that uh, he's potentially gonna be doing for a client. And then over here we have a warlock. And I don't know anything about warlock, but, but Ben does. Ah, I don't know that much about it. Okay, Ben. <laughs> I always take it all back. It's a very, uh, a, a very low production numbers game. Okay. So, uh, somewhat unusual to see in the wild, certainly. And uh, the owner of that game was also able to track down uh, an old stock, original unused playfield, uh, which had some printing defects in it. So, it'll, that playfield will involve some restoration as well, but uh, nothing compared to what this one would have. Yeah, this one's you know it's worn. It's definitely loved. It's got its wear marks here. Yeah. Um, and we're, we'll take a look at you know what the the printing defects. So we've got a, a half tone gradient going on over here, and we'll see where that is on the other one. But let's go look at these playfields now. And my battery's gonna die. Oh, that's so sad. Well, we're gonna make it quick. So here is the new old stock Warlock playfield, <laughs> and finding one of these, I, I don't even know where you'd find one of these, but there's the printing defect that he's working on. Well, that's the printing 50. defect. Well, right this here. Is, this, this is, is a, a new one. An that attempt we're... at a halftone repair, which I'm not actually happy with yet, but um, there's another version that's going to be coming. Uh, so, I, I need to return my attention to this. So he's going to be working on this, but I, I mean, finding a new old stock Warlock Playfield. I mean, I don't even know where you find this. 
you know, the guy who owns this game, he uh, he finds these. He things. finds them. Yeah, he really he's got a knack for it. <laughs> All right, then over here, you know, we're working. He's working on that pin bot. So this was a used playfield, and you can see he's working his way through it. He's got the new white here that he's redone, and that looks great. Here's the old white. You can see it's a little probably a little more yellow, and you know, a little in, faded, but. This in is, general, this playfield was in better condition than the one in the game that I own. Um, there's going to be some more work to do to clean up these. This is where you lost a little bit, little bit of paint from removing the mylar, um, but that should be easy yeah. to touch up. So uh, he, Ben is a master at this stuff because I really want to show this one right here. This is a Joker Poker, the EM playfield, and we're going to see if we can throw up a picture magically. Poof. Now this one appears, and um, this is one that he this he's restored this. This thing is amazing. I, I don't uh, Ben. This is like astonishing at There's, how um, immaculate it is. And you said like water slide decals everywhere, or well, all of this red is redone paint, and the red here and the yellow here, and these red bursts here and here. And the white sawtooth around the red bristles. This, all this stuff is oh done with gosh. paint. All the key lines are done with paint um, using vinyl masking. So all these inserts were replaced and re glued um, and then you know, clear coated and leveled. Um, but all the fine detail artwork, like all these face cards and the lettering, um, all of these are water slide decals. So anything that's white. Is actually a mixture of off-white that I that I mixed up and resprayed with an airbrush, and all of this original art had been painted over, uh, so that I could get a nice even coating of off-white, and then all the line art was replaced with water slide decals uh, that were prepared in a scan before I started working on the game, and then doctored in Photoshop and Illustrator. Ben, this is like this is what I would call a high end. Restore like <laughs> high end, you know, like you know, luxury status. If you want to like spend more money on a pinball, <laughs> then like three of them are worth like this is like back to factory fresh. And it, I love that it maintains some of the originality up here with like you know, you could see like, yeah, you know what, there is wood here. I love that. I love yeah. that it's not in, I love that it's not pristine, pristine back to like. Brandy new, I like that we've got our nice solid areas here, our high wear areas, everything looks spectacular, and you maintain just enough authenticity. Well, it's nice to, to have it tell its own story, and also uh, there comes a point where um, if you have to overhaul every single square inch of the thing, then why aren't you just uh, burning a new set of screens and screen printing fresh? All right, Ben, thank you. Man, this thing is amazing. Your, uh, your work is top notch. If I ever get rich, you're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is Ben at Replay Restorations, and he does an amazing job. He, we're we're going to say goodbye to our lovely ladies here, Miss World, and uh, well, hopefully we can come back and play it when it's, when it's all put together. So thanks a lot, Ben. Thank we'll you. see you later. Great to be appreciated. <laughs> yeah, we should definitely appreciate this because this is this is artwork at its finest. All right, see you guys. Let's uh, let's go on home. Uh, we'll take a look. Here are his pins that he's got here because everybody wants to know. He's got the Grand Lizard here. He's got a Diner, Arabian Nights, F14, and then he had the the pin bot. But all right.
Cry your eyes out over me. Can't you see?